It's great to continue to think about our Saviour and to think about Jesus coming into our world. And this is when we remember it this time of year. And the title of our talk and thoughts this evening is What Jesus Has Brought Us. You see, when Jesus Christ entered the world, he brought things with him. And we're going to think about just four things that Jesus brought with him when he came to this world. There are many, many more things, but we're just going to focus on four. Uh, Before we get to those four points, maybe we can just uh, acknowledge two well-known facts about Jesus. Uh, The first one that probably most people would know is that he was born in a manger, in an animal feeding box. That's where Jesus was born. I don't know if you remember where you were first laid as a little child, whether your mother has ever told you that, but uh, we know Jesus was laid in a manger uh, amongst the straw in an animal feeding trough. We also know he was born in Bethlehem. Uh, uh, that's, uh, it's still around today, Bethlehem. You can still go and visit Bethlehem. It's in the Middle East, in Israel, in Palestine. And back then, it was a very small, unimportant town, maybe of about four or 500 people. And take this in. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Yet he entered our world at Bethlehem. He didn't enter our world at Jerusalem, the capital city at the time in the local region, and he didn't enter it at Rome, the the city of the empire. He came and entered at tiny Bethlehem. Now, some of you here and watching online will have arrived in Britain for the first time as an adult. That will be your experience. Uh, And and I'm assuming you arrived by an aeroplane. And um, what was your experience when you came down in an aeroplane? Where were you landing? I'm assuming you landed uh, at somewhere like Gatwick or Heathrow, those great big airports in London. I'm fairly certain you didn't land at Newquay Airport in Cornwall, a a tiny town in a way, but it does have an airport. But I don't think its runway uh, can handle jumbo jets. Yet Bethlehem took God. God landed, if we can say that, in our world there. Now, why did God enter our world there? Was he trying to sneak into our world? Well, no. As we've been thinking about Christmas recently, we know that the the, the angels appeared. They announced his arrival in Bethlehem. They told the shepherds to go and visit, and God put a star in the sky that brought um, wise men eventually to visit Jesus in Bethlehem. So what was God doing? Well, I'll tell you one thing he was doing. He was ignoring the proud and the powerful and the rich and the big shots of the world. He was stooping down to live with the poor and the humble and the weak. You see, God does resist the proud. If you are proud, if I am proud, if we walk around this world with an attitude, then God resists us. And Jesus hasn't come for those who think they are okay. He has come for those who know they are not okay. Who, who know they need help, who know that they're a sinner. He's come for that type of person. Now, is that you this evening? Do you feel that? Do you know that? Well, then there's hope for you in Jesus Christ. We mentioned airports, didn't we? And international airports have customs checks. They check what you are bringing into a country. Sometimes they open your bags and suitcases, all of them to examine what you might be bringing in. Well, Bethlehem didn't have customs checks. And if there had been custom checks, would they have paid much attention to Jesus Christ, a newborn baby, naked coming into the world, wrapped in some cloth? What could they possibly have found on him? What could he possibly bring into our world? But do remember, Jesus is God. He is coming from a different realm, a different world, you could say. He is 100% man and 100% God. 
No one like him has ever entered our world before or will ever again. And he brought with him many things, you could say, from out of this world. But they weren't noticed at first. They were hidden. They were in his very person. They were inside of him. So what did Jesus bring into our world when he was born? Well, the first thing that we're going to think about is light. Light for a dark world. That's what Jesus brought with him into our world. Not a physical light, but spiritual light to shine into our hearts. That's what he brought. In fact, Jesus' birth is described as a sunrise. We read it earlier, didn't we? From Luke. Here is a prophet speaking. And he says, the sunrise will come to us from heaven. So Jesus is described as a sunrise, but a unique one. He's not going to rise like a normal sun over our horizon. He is sent by God from heaven. He's a unique baby. He brings a unique light. And Jesus' birth and his life are going to be like a sunrise on our world, full of splendor, full of glory, full of warmth, full of goodness. So where do we see such light and glory in the manger? In Bethlehem. Well, as we said, it's hidden. One of the Christmas carols says, doesn't it? It says, look at the Godhead, but it's veiled in flesh. The Godhead is veiled in flesh. God's glory is, is covered in the flesh of mankind, but it's there in the manger. All the glory of God, the sunrise of God, is there in the manger, ready to be revealed. You know, one of the most famous footballers in the world is a man called Cristiano Ronaldo. And he used to play for a very, very famous football club, Real Madrid. And back in 2015, um, Cristiano Ronaldo decided that he was going to put on some clothes that made him look like a homeless man. He padded himself up a little bit. He put on a wig and a mustache and a beard. And he, in, he went into the very center of Madrid where everyone knows him and everyone idolizes him. And he put a chair and a, put a little dog next to the chair. And he put a little box by the chair and he, he, he started to do a few little tricks. But... There was Christian, Cristiano Ronaldo in all his glory, but it was hidden. No one knew it was him, but he was there. And then as he started to do more tricks and engage with people, people started to wonder. They were, hmm. He, he, you know, they started to see a bit of his glory. And then he picked up the ball and he talked to one little boy and he wrote his signature on it. And then he took off his wig and his mustache and his beard. And Wow! The boy was amazed, and then the crowds, they suddenly realized, and he was, he was surrounded. They came to him. They came to his glory, and he walked out to the Madrid center, and all, they all followed him. Well, that was for Cristiano Ronaldo. Jesus was born as a sunrise for our world, an ever-increasing revelation of God. And so when he's a man, and he lives in a town called Capernaum, they see his miracles and they're amazed. They hear his teaching and they've never seen any light like it. It's incredible. And they follow him. And Matthew can say about him, Matthew the disciple, he quotes an Old Testament prophet and he says, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. They saw it in Capernaum. I don't know if you've ever been on holiday and you, you rent a cottage somewhere and it's up on the hill. And you get up in the morning and the sunrise comes through because you're up on the hill so bright and early. And you get your morning cup of coffee and you sit on the porch and you go, isn't this wonderful? And then you look down into the valley and you see all the poor houses down in the shadow. And they're not going to get the sunrise for another three hours. Well, Capernaum was like up on the hill. It got the sunlight of Jesus Christ first. Well, Nazareth got it before even that as a, as a young man, but it burst on Capernaum and then Jesus traveled and his light burst on Galilee and he went down to Jerusalem and they saw his light and his church has proclaimed Jesus Christ ever since and it's a light that is around the whole world. 
like a sunrise entering people's hearts every day of the year. And he will come again. And we all will see the ultimate sunrise of Jesus Christ. Of course, Jesus didn't come to shine on the land, but to shine in our hearts. He came to give us the knowledge of the glory of God. That's what he came to give us in our hearts, the knowledge of the glory of God. Spiritual light, eternal light. And we need this revelation. You and I need it because we live in darkness. Without this light, we are all in darkness. And we appreciate darkness, don't we? We even appreciate it on a physical level. Uh, you know, winter, uh, Britain is, is quite a dark country to live in, in winter, isn't it? Uh, and tomorrow, we'll probably feel it more than any other day because it's the shortest day in the year tomorrow. And we're going to feel that darkness. And now we've got more restrictions that have been placed on us that are going to make us feel the darkness even over this short Christmas period, maybe. And then it stretches on into the new year and maybe towards springtime. And you can feel a bit of a darkness. And so much so that the, the people are saying, listen, take vitamin D because you're not going to see a lot of sunlight at the moment. But do you feel the darkness in your heart? The shameful secrets that you keep hidden from everyone. We've all got them, haven't we? And if God's light is to shine into them, you might run for cover. You might try to hide them even in your heart. Just like sometimes when someone enters a room and the people inside just did not expect the door to open and for exposure to come in. And they scramble to hide what is shameful and wrong. Jesus was born to shine into your heart like a new sunrise. Are you up for that? Are you ready for that? Are you willing for that? Do you, do you want that? You certainly need it. So Jesus brought light into our world. He also brought healing, healing for the heart. Another prophet of God who recognized that Jesus was like a sunrise, he said this, 400 years before Jesus came, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. He is talking about Jesus ultimately here. And he likens him to a sunrise where the rays of the sun, as they break upon the earth, they bring warmth and light and joy and healing to people. Well, Jesus' light brings healing in his wings, in his rays. When we fall under his light and caress in that kind of way, do you know your heart can be healed? Healed of its darkness, healed of its bitterness, of its anger, of its hatred, of its regret, of its shame, of its pride, of its selfishness. The list can go on and on. Our hearts can be healed of these things. We can be totally cleansed of these things. You can know supernatural healing in your heart because Jesus came into our world to bring it to people like me and you. You know, in 2019, a 17-year-old girl called Kristen Anderson, she lay down on a railway track not far from her house. And she waited for the next train to come along. She didn't think her heart could be healed. That's why she lay down. She thought there was no healing for her heart. And a little time later, 33 railway cars went over her at 50 miles an hour. Incredibly, somehow, her head got pushed off the rail on one side. And she survived losing both her legs on the other rail. 
Now, you would think that would leave her in a worse place than before. But that was the beginning of light. That was the beginning of healing in her heart. Jesus Christ brought his light and healing into Kristen's heart. She came to believe and know him. Her legs weren't healed, but her heart was. Slowly but surely, the light of Jesus Christ brought healing in Kristen's heart. You see, there's a healing that goes deeper than the body. Jesus himself made this very clear. On one occasion, four friends brought another friend to Jesus. And they laid him in front of Jesus because he was a paralyzed man. They brought him on a stretcher. He couldn't move his body. But Jesus saw faith in that man and in his four friends. And he looked at that man in all his helplessness and need of physical healing. And he said to him, son, your sins are forgiven you. Yes, he needed healing in his body. But Jesus dealt with his greatest need, the healing of his heart. That's the healing we all need most. And that's the healing that only Jesus Christ can bring you. No one else can give you that healing of sins forgiven, of a clean conscience. Only he can do it. And to show the crowd that he could do it, he said to the man, get up and walk. And he did, because the words of Jesus Christ are the words of God. Why did Kristen Anderson lie down on those tracks in 1999? Well, let's hear what she said in her own words to that answer. She simply said, I didn't realize I could go to Jesus. I didn't realize I could go to Jesus. But you can. He's the only one who can heal you. And she, in his grace, discovered that. So Jesus brought light and he brought healing. And thirdly, he brought joy. Joy for the trapped. I don't know if you feel trapped tonight, but there are plenty of people in this world that feel trapped by their situation. They feel like they're in prison, and it feels like darkness. But Jesus Christ came to bring joy for those trapped in darkness. Listen again to that prophet who spoke 400 years before Jesus. He said, The Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out leaping like calves from the stall. Do you see that? There is release. There is freedom. You will go out. And the stall that you will go out from is not some pretty little stall in a field where the sunlight is shining. No, this is a stall like one in a cave where you're barred up and you're blocked in. Maybe for the whole winter. But now release has come. Freedom has come. It's been opened up. You see, freedom and joy go together in Jesus Christ. And the picture here is of young calves and kids and lambs jumping for joy as they enter the spring field in the daylight, having been let free from the darkness of the winter stall. And we all know what they look like, don't we? They are cute. Little kids jumping in the field, calves bucking and jumping, and it does capture joy. Have you known joy like that? That's the joy that Jesus Christ brings. You can know this joy of freedom, freedom from darkness, from sin, from guilt, from shame. The Bible says that the entrance of God's word brings light. God's word, the Bible, his very truth. That's how his sunrise is still rolling over this earth right now as the word of God enters people's hearts and they experience his light and his truth and his freedom and his healing and his joy. You know, happiness, this world has happiness, but happiness is a bit like a mountain stream. 
When the, when the snow melts, it causes streams to start, and they flow quickly, but they flow with a root very shallow, and they're temporary. And then they stop. But joy, joy is like standing on the banks of the Amazon River and looking one way and seeing a deep mass of water that flows out of the farthest distance and it flows into the furthest distance the other way like an eternal river and it flows past your feet and it's deep and it won't be moved and it's an inexhaustible water. That's joy. Happiness depends on your situation. But joy is a gift from God. Jesus brings it. And Jesus brought it into this world at Bethlehem. So Jesus brought light. He brought healing. He brought joy. We're going to think of one final thing that Jesus brought. And this is serious. They're all serious. Serious with joy and serious with somber reality. You see, Jesus also brought burning. Burning for the proud. You see, Jesus is the judge of the whole earth. He is its savior and he is its judge. And when he was born, he came as both at that time. If I held up a picture of Chris Hemsworth, the actor, and I held him here, as a little baby, six months old, and you go, oh, wow, look at that little chubby baby. He's going to become Thor one day in the Marvel movies. Yeah, he's going to become that. But when Jesus arrives in Bethlehem, it isn't that he will become the judge of the whole earth, but that he is the judge of the whole earth. In Jesus, the judge of all people entered our world. And if you in your pride reject him, what is left for you? What is left for you? Well, he's burning. That's what the prophet 400 years earlier said. Listen to him. For listen, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. They'll be like in a farmer's field where the hay, where the straw has been cut or the, the wheat has been cut and all that's left is the dry stuff that burns so easily. They will be like stubble. The day that... It the judgment and the burning that Jesus Christ brings. Do you believe in hell? It is a real place. But listen to what the prophet said. He put a but into that passage. We've been looking at it. But, but what? But for you who fear my name. in him. He is the Lord and God of all things. He offers you truth for you to believe in and be saved. If you will fear him, humble yourself, stop being proud, believe his word, then instead of burning comes joy, comes healing, comes glorious light. Did you notice that both these things come from the same sun, both burning and joy? We understand that, don't we? You can go and sunbathe in the sun and enjoy it, and that same sun can start a forest fire. Take that sunbather for a moment, sunbathing, enjoying the sun, and then you take a magnifying glass and hold it over their leg, it will burn them. 
It will burn them. Suddenly they will be burning. Well, that magnifying glass is like the holiness of God. God is a holy God. He hates sin. In his holiness, God's light burns. It burns all of us in its holiness. Yet Jesus was born into our world, as we saw, to hang on a cross. And for the magnifying glass of God's holy anger against sin to be placed over him and for him to take our burning. That's what the cross is about. That's what Jesus came to do. The judge of the whole earth first offers himself as our savior. And on the cross, the wrath of God, the right anger of God against sin is poured out on Jesus Christ. And if you will fear him, if you will believe in him, if you will humble yourself and know that you need a savior, then he will save you. He will forgive you. He will bear your burning. And instead of that burning, you will have the magnifying glass of God turned away from you and you will know the light of his joy and his healing. Can I leave you with a picture as we close? Here it is. It's a Christmas candle. I went across to my mum's the other day, and it was at my mum's. And as soon as I saw it, I remembered it from years ago. So that candle is about 40 years old. Uh, but I remember it when it had its full hat. You might see that it's been burned away a bit. And so I said, oh, mum, what happened to the hat? And she said, well, I lit it once, but then I couldn't burn him. So I blew it out. My mom had compassion on a blob of wax. That's funny, I know. But listen, God, God has had compassion on us, on you and me. Listen again to how it's put in Luke chapter 1. Because of the tender mercy of our God. Do you see it? God in his compassion. Because of his tender mercy, the sunrise, that's Jesus, will visit us from heaven to give light to those living in darkness. What compassion from the living God to send his son to bear the burning that we deserve, that we might be children of God, that we might leap like kids and like lambs and like calves and enter his kingdom forever to enjoy him. What an incredible, merciful God. And you can run to his light tonight. You can put your trust in him and know forgiveness of sins. That's what Jesus came to bring. He brought them into the world and they wouldn't be here if he hadn't have come. And God, in his mercy, has not lit the candle of his holy wrath yet. There is time to turn to him, and it can be tonight.